Welcome to CRA Modcast number 7. We're going to talk about scope carvings. So, somebody. Somebody, anybody? Anybody on here. David. Shall, David. I, shall I drive the bus? David, drive the bus. Drive the bus. Or, uh, drive the bus. Okay, cool. Let's, let's smash some hippies. Uh, so, since we talk about Mark 12s a little bit too much, apparently, um, and to go off on a tangent and talk about from and also where the whole thing ended up we thought maybe it'd be a good idea to kind of talk about scope carbines and pull from vince's knowledge and experience in the area as well as my nerdness of running around scraping up pictures and stuff kind of start off uh, i thought a good point to really start talking about the scope carbine was probably like what 1990s around everybody's favorite uh you know talking about like the the black hawk down era of carbines and stuff um one of the I images that kind personally of... know todd blackburn oh there you go <laughs> so one of the things to kind of kick it off i thought was to kind of talk about when we were talking about in the wild we were talking about how when people had needs they just made stuff happen like people would ask for gear i thought a perfect example um was uh larry vickers article and write up on some of their carbines that they had around that time frame um, you know, talking about how they had uh, the picture I got shown up here. He's talking about how they had uh, dive flashlights rigged up with a pressure switch, and they had their guys like I think they said their comms guys wired them up for them or something like that. Uh, it's a really good so, read. Go out and find it. Yeah, I think it's on like Soldier System Daily. It's under their, or maybe it's under Bravo Company, one of their Warrior blogs postings or something. Um, but it was just talking about like all the different stuff folks would do when they would. You know, through training, through like experience, they decide, hey, here's a need. And one of the discussions um, that Mr. Vickers has talked about for a long time is that that whole time frame brought about this desire for uh, a magnified optic to go kind of with um, a carbine to give them a little bit more accuracy, reach, some magnification and stuff. And that's where the Schmidt and Bender short dot came out of. And to me, I kind of looked at that and thought, okay, that's probably a pretty good focal point to really start carbine thing and what ultimately would become the mark 12 programs and the reckies and all the stuff that everybody loves to you know turn around and clone and and spend lots of money on um i thought that would be a good starting point uh, just kind of because there's at least some decent documentation there i mean i'm sure before even this period people were going out and trying to buy stuff and, and put them on carrying handle mounts and everything like that um I don't know if you've got any specific anecdotes from that time period from folks you know, Vince? Um, not really. Um, the only person that I know specifically from the time frame that you're speaking of would be Todd Blackburn. Um, and I know him through a happy accident, but I didn't really have any time to sit down and speak to him about weapons and the kinds of things that they did with them at that time period. So my knowledge on that is very limited. All right, cool. I was just thinking. Um, but yeah, I thought, you know, that was kind of like one of the first images that popped into my head was, you know, just this, we want to be able to have lights and stuff on a rifle, so let's make it work. We're talking, you know, hose clamps, zip yeah. ties and stuff, wiring yeah. things on there. Uh, and then kind of... Road, we have um, also similar time frame, uh, Sergeant Major Lamb of Viking Tactics. Mm -hmm. uh, he's posted some stuff about his carbine and one of the other carbines that they had. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit more on it. Um, one of the guys from our clone group, Augie Kim, actually had a kick ass clone of this rifle at one point in time. Um, and they used an Armalite free float tube. And I can't remember if they actually cut the hole or it had the hole for the front sight base. Um, there was this whole ordeal for installing this damn thing. But this was of free float tubes being used um, on carbines. I mean, I know, you know, in this particular one, I believe Mr. Lamb used um, an EOTech at the time. But, you know, it was I, I, could, I was thinking of like an evolutionary step towards, it's kind of a you know, at the same time they were like, yeah, they were like, say, you know, give us a low powered scope that can kind of be used as like a red dot but also have magnification to do 
you know, to see further. So you had like the early Schmidt and Benders, and I think those were what, like a one, were they a one to four? I mean, I think they actually were like, they weren't exactly one. They were like a 1.1 for like 1.1 yeah. 1. 1 to four. And then eventually there were one to six, 1.1 1. 1 to sixes and stuff. Um, but that kind of time period seems to be the genesis. And it's and it's definitely a time period I'm very interested in. And I want to research more and, and talk to folks and and dig into it. Um, you know, if you're if you're a fan of Allen Engineering and OpSync, then you'll also know that that time OpSync had a contract for the third model suppressor, um, which I didn't have them pulled up here. But there's a whole bunch of pictures from, um, you know, the whole Mogadishu um, Gothic Serpent era where they had M16s and some. I think I think there were some M4s as well with the ops third model suppressors that run all the way up to the front site base. If you got some time, feel free to hop on Alan engineering's uh, Facebook page. Cause I know they've got some pictures he showed of the collar and it being machined and how it like fits on the front site base. It's a pretty cool read. Uh, so yeah, definitely take a, a moment to go out and engineering's page. And if you want to ask him some questions, Ron Allen has always been a really cool guy about just answering questions about those cans and how they were made and other kinds of stuff like that. Um, uh, but then, you know, kind of moving on from there, I'm trying to think what else I got pulled up here, pictures, um, pot, one of the other coolest clones, but also an evolutionary step were the Knight's MRE rails. What is it? More real estate. I think that's what it stood for, but I the, um, uh, point out how fucking dicked up his, uh, scope brains are. Yeah. But <laughs> like we saw, like what we talked about in the, um, in the end of the wild thing, it's like people, it's like, I need rings that'll clear my freaking peck too. Cause it, look, look, look at that, look at that peck too. Yeah. You know, I think that thing's barely clear in the peck too. So I'm, and uh, I'm guessing that's pre another... LaRue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. He's wearing multi cam. Is he wearing multi So, oh, wow. Yeah, that is multi cam. Yeah, that's multi cam. Wow. That's, hey, man. That's cry. Those have to be more recent. Uh, yeah, combat pants so, because they have some multi cam stretchy stuff. So they're <laughs> a fairly yeah uh, recent combat and pan. yeah and and so like I know I know we we're talking before about how everybody's all like oh my god the recce and I know there's every you know every other week or so people ask about the recce and you know how everybody says well there was one recce it's like well no no not really no um, that whole concept. And actually, it's also alluded to a lot in Black Rifle 2. If you haven't gone out and gotten that book, mm. I definitely recommend it. What? You don't like that book? No, I just haven't gone out to seek it. Oh, oh, I was like, damn, you're being <laughs> He's shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want that salty. Jesus. Yeah, I, it's, it's like on my short list of books to, to go and see. I've, I've seen some samples from it. And uh, he's got like a whole section in there, too, about like scoped carbines a little bit about the the mre rail and the recce and some of these other ideas and talk about it wasn't it wasn't like exclusive to like the navy side like the army guys were were doing it way before um but there's like this common thread of this idea of let's put low powered variable glass on a rifle that's either an m4 with a free float rail or later on actually add a new barrel into it yeah. Um, again, here's I think this is Master Sergeant Horgan. Uh, this is the the picture. If you go to Larue's website, you're going to find that picture right there. Yeah. But again, it's another. It's an M4 Knights can. Uh, Knights MRE rail with the the front sight chopped off of it and variable optic. Again, this is this is probably similar time frame around when when the recce. I I, you, I don't have my camera, but you can air quoting right here with my my fingers because that's just what people call them. Um, but let me, let me see if I can find, so this is, this is one of the other pictures that's considered a recce rifle or whatever. It's, it, it's the most popular one of uh, them. It's one of the, the yeah, it's one of the most popular recce. It has yeah. the most popular kind that people like to build. If you've got a Mark 12, a lot of guys want to use their, their ops or AEM can on a recce as well literally build a 16 inch basically mark 12 and that's that's kind of one of the versions there i am not sure what actual rail length that is because the can seems to come right up to it 
and that's been a discussion a lot and that's something that i've 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 been in that discussion a lot whether it's a 14.5 inch barrel with a urx2 yeah. going around in circles yeah. everyone's saying well it'll fit under it'll fit with a ff brass at a certain length or it'll fit with the yeah. urx2 but that can is so close it, but with it blown up it does seem to be you can pretty well i i'm pretty sh sure you can see the barrel nut there i'm, I'm or the ring or whatever i think yeah. that's an ff brass but i mean i could well, be wrong i mean it's like definitely a nice and it would, i mean yeah it's definitely a nice well and you guys you guys have seen my 16 inch barrel with the with the collar it would be and it would be that close with the 14.5 yeah, but you had the wrong scope which, on that so it doesn't count yeah go haze yourself but but i had the right barrel <laughs> <laughs> but no <laughs> All, all I'm saying is if you could get a 14.5 inch with an SPR profile, not the M4 collar, yeah. but if you could actually get it with a long collar, or sure, it doesn't really matter at that point, short collar, long collar. But if you could get it to where it, it met up at the base or at the uh, shoulder of that collar, it it would make sense to have it as an FFS. Yeah. And I don't think the... That, th there was actually a... I don't think it'll clear. Uh, I don't think the 14.5 will clear on... And that uh, was the debate. Yeah, I don't think it will because the 16 inch is already pretty close on the like, for example, yeah. like if you look at the mod eight. Um, anyways, it Which, could be a mid length. Uh, it could be the, one of the 10 inch. There was like a, a nine inch mid length. I think there was like a 10 inch mid length that were out there. The Which mm -hmm. you know leads me right into um, this gentleman here. I actually had his name pulled up at one point. Where did he go? Uh, it's like this. It's a. It's one of the other gentlemen with the actual other actual recce here. I'll find it real quick. Um, okay. One of the other most popular recce pictures that's not the one of the rifle on the table. Um, it's definitely a 14 and a half inch barrel. That's the KCM research. Sorry. There, Here we go. There's, right, sir. There's, there's plenty of 14 and a half inch barrel uh, recce's that have been seen on footage. And it's basically a block two with a uh, scope. Yeah. Here's, here's the gentleman. So... I cannot remember um, his name. I usually like if I know if we know who somebody is, you know, like the what? What there was? A, he had a nickname, didn't he? Well, I don't know if I want to. You know, I don't okay, know if you yeah, want to but start no. Calling guys. I, I'm just making sure we're on the same page. Here. Yes, yes. So um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was brought up before here on one of our videos. Yeah, but he if was. I'm not yeah. mistaken. He was KIA or something. To that yeah, exactly, and that's why I wouldn't want to. You yeah. know, no. That's so yeah. I actually had his name. Written anyway. down somewhere, and you know, I like to be. And that's a night force, correct? So the thing to point out on this one is, it's definitely a fourteen and a half inch barrel. He's running a BE Myers, and I believe that's actually the mid length rail, like the the ten inch or something like that. So it was like that's a legit quote unquote recce. Right, and it's a. Yeah, it's not the other version that everybody, you know, parrots whenever they say, the, "Oh, well, a recce." The Leisure barrel. A sixteen inch little job. Yeah, exactly. Well, and the other thing is that's that's a uh, uh, the lower, yeah. yeah. It's not it's not the A one that everyone wants to say. Yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's an M M four. I'm out of yeah. I'm out of my mind right now. M four and it, you wouldn't really be able to tell if it was yeah. M four versus M four A one on the lower. Yeah, not right. But you see what I'm you see where I'm going to. Point five to ten by twenty four. And it's yeah. So I mean, it was just it was it was just an excellent example of this whole. Um, sorry, I'm clicking around here. The idea that when you talk about things like recies and carbines, there aren't a lot of standards because, as we touched upon in the whole in the wild thing, this isn't a pro. This wasn't a program rifle that was churned out like the Block Two M4 is now, right? No. This wasn't a pull up an NSN, order an upper. Ta -da, here it is. You know, these were either private order unit armory. Some supposedly came out of crane. I think some of the the Lilja ones, some I think I've heard some say those were yeah, those were an actual crane thing, but I don't know what the actual determination ever was on those. Well, and then you have guys like high caliber cells, if I'm not mistaken. He comes from crane. Yeah. Yeah. Selling He's wrecky crane. uppers. He's yeah. Crane. Yeah. yeah. And they're selling it. If I'm not mistaken, actually, yes. Larry Vickers did a video with that guy. Yes, he did. Well, that's so. That's one of the other gentlemen that's there. Yeah. 
Um, and that's I know a, there's that's a little room out right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's Kevin from HCS, and then I think there's the other gentleman that's more uh, – Mr. Brown is more behind the scenes, but he's the actual – crane gentleman that that worked there and you know did barrel profiling and some other stuff um so anyways yeah so this picture also was a a, a point of major discussion on the fo- uh the page a while back is of how sexy you is know it? that's a block 2 m4 mm-hmm. yeah it is that's a block 2 m4 set up exactly like almost all of these other rifles you know it's the, it's the same ongoing concept of or improve its capabilities as far as like accuracy of low power and, glass yeah low power glass a free float barrel and well, in a lot of cases a suppressor yeah and, and the and, thing is and, that sorry go ahead yeah no you, you go ahead well i was going to say is the the thing with that recce that has been in the latest discussion which i'm just going to call it recce it is a 2.5 location but he has it he has an offset t1 on it with the LaRue mount. I mean, these are all things that we've seen slowly coming in. You know, the uh, uh, the cantilever mounts, the offset red dots. It's like they all uh, well, I mean, it's, congregated it's, on this one rifle. You know what I'm an, saying? It's, it, a, it's, an adv- it's an advance in technology and an advance in training. Because, yeah. I mean, even with the like the low power variable optics, like the 1 to 6 and the 1 to 8 and things like that, is for a lot of the dudes, it makes a lot more sense to run the one to eight on eight power and then throw an offset T1. So you have yeah. Yeah. both capabilities. Well, and, yeah. and that's and, and that's a preference thing. That, a preference thing too. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at a lot of the trainers too, um, you know, I know um, Kyle DeFore does like a whole scoped carbine class. I think he just recently posted his latest new um, you know, rifle that he's going to be running this year. It's like a BCM 16 inch upper with a USO uh, 1.1 to 8 or 1.1 to 10 or something like that. Um, you know, like that's his, that's like his go-to rifle he's using. Like the, the whole idea of the the variable optic 1 to 4 carbine has become almost like the standard go, you know, rifle in a way for, for a lot of things. It makes sense to me. You know, even even just a four power, even if you got six power, a fourteen and a half inch or a sixteen inch rifle, if you're using good ammo, you can easily stretch that out to six hundred, seven hundred yards. Yeah. I mean, you can get it even further. Um, it's not ideal. No. It's, you know, the wind starts to get really funky out there. Oh, uh, and then that whole transonic range, which we will touch oh, on yeah. in a later video. <laughs> if we'll ever get Scott in here. Yeah. Everybody spam <laughs> Scott on Facebook and yeah, make everybody, it. everybody, yeah. But when see, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, in the in the wild video, uh, we started talking about how you started seeing uh, the Larue mount. It started coming out on uh, on rifles. On, on, it was on carbine, I think, is the picture we drew up last time. Yeah. Uh, you start seeing that, and then you started seeing the uh, the doctor sites. I think it was with the uh, the Mark Twelve. There was a doctor on a Premier yeah. scope. Yeah, you start seeing that, and then now we're starting to see all of that come together on, a, yeah. on one one rifle. That's, it's, I mean, it's a fourteen point five inch. It, they're they're out. That that's a very heavily used rifle. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly. And now and they're it, starting to way, turn it. Very, yeah, it's a very effective way to increase the capability of a commonly fielded rifle. Yeah, you and, know, even if you had to take a plain Jane. Loaded, but at least maybe even the heavier pair profile in 4A1 barrel, mm-hmm. you know. And if you pair it with something like Mark 262, for very effective accuracy for what's generally expected of a yeah of a of a, of a grunt rifle. I mean, what the average M16 I think with 855 balls expected to do what three four inches at 100 yards three, i think no, i think no, it's three to four. no 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 i thought it was three to five moa four? I'm, I'm, yeah it's well, more, if i'm not mis- if i'm not mistaken and i could be wrong i think the max is six six MOA. okay so but like it's three to six so moa I was being generous yeah yes, you were being very generous in your but, dissertation but inherently speaking but I mean, Inherently speaking, by its design, yeah. the M4 is a very accurate service rifle in comparison to a lot of other countries like Britain, Germany, and all of them. 
Yeah. Um, the M4 typically um, is far more accurate than the standard that it's given. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and the thing is, is the those standards for marksmanship acceptance and also the rifle and, and ammo acceptance are based on lowest common denominator. You know, we need yes. to put a person in boots with a rifle and have them hit an enemy soldier at 300. Yes. Like that's no, absolutely. where the standards are for. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's been pretty commonly seen that even, you know, even with a Colt H bar, you know, 20 inch rifle using something like off the shelf Mark 262 or Black Hills Red Box, if you go and look up Mullins, you know, awesome accuracy threads that are on, you know, most of the three main forms that are out there, you know, a, a pretty plain Jane rifle you know, j almost certainly under two inches, yeah. you know, an inch and a half. If you're, if you're being mediocre and with good shooters, guys are getting under an inch with, you know, in some cases, not even, you know, free flow to rifles, so, which I mean, provided, provided you're not using some garbage like a bush hamster or a PSA yeah. and you're using a quality <laughs> manufacturer. Um, well, I guess it depends on which PSA. No, fuck you. Um, if you're using a good Colt or any major manufacturer yeah. that's a quality brand like BCM, DD, Sons of Liberty, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, if you were to take any of those manufacturers and have them build like an M4, a standard M4 upper, that upper should be at the bare minimum under two inches. Yeah, at 100. At well, the bare, it, let's see. at the bare fucking minimum. And there's if you can't manage to build an upper in that shoots under that, you're as wrong as two boys kissing, and there's no two fucking ways around it. <laughs> or well, I mean, there's a second option. Eight fifty five though. I mean, like I don't know. It might fifty five. Well, I was about to say. No, and that's what I was getting at. Switch rate versus utter, ammo. No, I call utter fucking bullshit on the M eight fifty five. Well, well, you're also team. saying at a hundred. At a at a hundred, it makes sense. Once you get past four hundred, and those bullets start. Uh, losing the speed, hit transonic and tumbling. Okay, okay, this it's, is it's a the, different thing. But this is not the ammunition. I know, video. I know. This is not that. This is not the modcast for that. But what what I was going to say is, don't buy a one in seven and expect it to shoot fifty five. You know, a max. Yeah. You know, well, I'm talking like outside of. You know, don't don't expect well, that to hit. Well, all I'm going to say is, don't expect that to hit half or you know point five moa at a hundred versus seventy seven grain out of one to seven. You well, know, you gotta you gotta be. Like I said, Mullen would disagree because I believe his threads have his Colt H bar doing fifty or fifty five grain blitz kings, fifty two okay, grain going, blitz kings. We're going, oh, we're going but you talk about other. blitz kring. I mean, we're, we're getting mechanically, yeah, okay. you're getting That's mechanically a, yeah. to twist we're, the bullets. They're all possible. We're, get, we're getting into two videos yeah, away from here. We're going yeah. away down a fucking anyway. Trail. So Let's reel this shit back to, to do my to do yet yeah, to do my <laughs> thing of getting back on target uh, on topic. Uh, when did the magnifiers start hitting these carbines to try to increase uh, visual range? Who's that? Yeah, when that did the magnifiers hit? Because okay, because like you um, started seeing EOTechs and you started seeing the magnifiers or aim far, points magnifier. I guess this is probably my wheelhouse more so than anyone. Um, I started seeing magnifiers. Um, appear on rifles around the 2010-2011-ish time frame. Um, some of them were either bought by the individual soldier or they were um, acquired with unit funds, but they were not um, a massively issued thing. So I know through one of the guys that I deployed with, um, that on one of the deployments he went on after I'd gotten out, the magnifiers had started to see an increase in use around the 2013 time frame. But I can only speak to that from one unit in active duty army. So take that for what it's worth. And all of right. those magnifiers that were used were used on aim point comp M4s or comp M4Ss because okay. all the EOTechs had died. Okay. Well, and see, the, that's the thing is we constantly see the, uh, which I can't off the top of my head name the letters and numbers that make up the Yale Tech magnifier, but we see them a lot 
in our group. Right? Everyone wants a magnifier I, with the EOTech to make it. I think it. a lot of that, if you're really personally asking, I think a lot of that comes down to a lot of the guys that are cloning um, service rifles are cloning guns that you would see in a SOCOM unit. Okay, so, so that's that's a part of the SOCOM so kit. Not so much a line infantry unit. These are more right. of, like the CQBRs and the and the, because the way I see it, shit like that are more of a SOCOM rifle, not a block infantry or not a normal infantry issued item. Right. With the reason I bring it up, exactly a scope carbine question, but like with the magfires is in a way a one to three magnification scope. It, if you, I mean, you can look is, at it that way. It is, but when you're looking at an optic like the aim point specifically, um, okay. when you throw an aim point, or I'm sorry, a magnifier behind an aim point, the magnifier is actually increasing the size of the dot. Yes, that is. So that is. At, the, at that point, really, well, it's like all, a, really all you're getting out of that is enhanced... Um, observation of the enemy the precision rifle fire really is an increase because you're getting a dot that is magnified to a certain degree so even on a one moa dot when you're magnifying it it's jumping up to a three moa dot or whatever the quotient may be well and so, then at what point do you start to compare that to a first focal plane yeah i was going to say that that's that's kind of the discussions folks have about a first focal plane versus a second focal plane is that at extreme magnification levels you know your your reticle that may look great at lower mag okay. um, suddenly so, um, is like blocking out detail. On that on that front, I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you're using um, magnified optics, specifically a low power variable optic on something like an M4 or a Block II, a uh, Recce or whatever, then a second focal plane optic is perfectly fine and acceptable. Um, there's no. It's actually better. There's no fucking reason to use a first focal plane. Learn your goddamn holds and learn how to shoot a fucking rifle. And that's about Thank the you. discussion. The only time that you should yep. begin to a first focal plane optic is in something like the case like the M110, the M110K, or some other... Um, say it. Some say other, Mark 12. No, I'm not even going to say the Mark 12. <laughs> something like an M24, an M40 whatever the fuck, the Mark 13, anything like that, then yes, please do step up to a first focal plane optic, but for what you would consider um, an intermediate range rifle, second focal plane is perfectly fine. Learn your holds, learn what your ammo does, learn what your rifle as long does. As, the, and as long as it's calibrated for whatever your top end is. Yes. 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 I mean, obviously, that the one that would be pretty retarded. Obviously, learn what the gun is going to do and learn your holds. I cannot emphasize enough: learn your fucking holds. But a second focal plane on an intermediate range gun is more than acceptable. First focal plane should be reserved for precision guns. All right. Well, and and that is exactly what I was going for with the magnifier. Was that discussion? That was. Yeah. So I mean, there because the idea was that it was because remember also Larue and ADM and a bunch of the others were adding the uh, the flip to side, mm -hmm. you know, mounts like yeah. The, the, some of them originally were like it was either like a twist on, like you had to pull the magnifier out, twist it on, and then you know Larue and them came up with like all the different you know flip to side, you mm -hmm. know, to left or to right or whatever mounts, and you had to get them at the same height as the damn EOTech or aim mm -hmm. point, and that was all kinds of fun, you know, more more money spent. Um, you know, then right, tied right into that, you also have the ACOGs that have the piggyback micro red dots and, you know, they're all, all part of this idea of let's, which is fucked up. you know, let's have an that. optic that can do two things. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's take, you know, an optic that can do both things really well. And it all kind of started, you know, as we mentioned at the beginning, a lot of that apparently started through, you know, the, you know, the follow-up from gothic serpent and mogadishu and stuff where there was like the desire for that could do this cool red dot thing but also give some of their guys who were in roles that needed you know more magnification and stuff to also be able to have that option as well mm -hmm. and that's and you know here we are nowadays one 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 to eights one to sixes are 
popping up from even like the lowest cost companies. Primary Arms is offering like right. one to six. I think they're about to offer a one to eight. I mean, Platinum they, Series. The Platinum Series does offer one to eight those, with a true one X. And those those aren't is, even those aren't even fucking low cost optics. Those are what a lot of people. Would no, no, the, yeah, they're Platinum. So, their yeah. Platinum Series are you know thousand dollar up mm-hmm. scopes. That is, yeah. which that's what you get and, into and when you're looking at a true one X to an eight X. You're looking at money. Glass had that kind of clarity from a true one X, yeah. and Leupold's always been that way. That's why they've. I don't want to get into politics about Leupold. They never. They're, they're always very honest. They're up front with their their one point five to the the four, or their they'll they'll say it's a one to four, but it's a one point two yeah. to one point five, and that's yeah. what we were talking about before the video with the uh, the the. Now what was it? The one to three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the mark the, the the CQT or whatever it was called. Yeah, that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, loophole CQT. That, that was something else. Yeah. So I mean, and and to kind of tie into that too is, um, <coughs> speaking of loophole and their, you know, renaming of the the three to nine to like the two and a half to eight and other kinds of stuff like that. And what was that rifle that used a lot of those two and a half to eights and three to nine? Man, that was that one rifle that I think nobody that wants us the, to uh, talk about anymore. Oh, I better not up. say it. Shut the fuck up. Mark, Mark 12. Shut the fuck up. Shh, shh, we're talking about SPRs now. But. We're talking about fucking rifles and scoped carbines. Oh, some okay. salty again. So. On the subject of Mark 12. No. Um, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Back back to what they were saying. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things where, like, the discussion... The, the Mark 12, in a way, is that that bear or gorilla in the in the fucking corner. It's like it, we we're, we're actively trying not to acknowledge it, but this whole discussion that we're having about the scoped carbine and what they are and what they did and why they are what they are is there was the scoped carbine, and then there was the official program that was the SPR and Mark 12, with basically just Recky. Yeah, let's get back to what we were doing before. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Well- it's, it's, it's just you can't not talk about the Mark 12 in the sense that that was part of the evolution. We've already talked about the Mark 12. Move the fuck on. Oh, uh, whatever. Okay, okay. It so, was there. It was part of the whole evolution. Is it dead? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. But like, you know, it's because the lesson learned was a shorter barrel with the new. It does the same fucking. Because at the time that the Mark 12 was made. There wasn't Black Hills Mark 262. Then there was Mark 262, and then they used it in other rifles. We're like, hey, <laughs> this one. <works. laughs> One more goddamn time. I'm going to drive to Texas and I'm going to cunt punch you into fucking oblivion. Shut up. <laughs> the SPR then. Mark 12. Um, so here, here's, here's the thing. We're talking about scope carving. We're talking, don't, don't it, we're talking about... Hold on. You're making it really hard. Hold on. We're, we're talking... Motherfucker. <laughs> we are talking about scoped carbines, right? Yes. So when we say, when we yes. say scoped carbines, that could be... If you say fucking Mark 12. In overreach. No, because the Mark 12 is not a carbine. It's got a rifle link gas system. And that's what I'm getting to. We're talking about carbine gas system, stuff like that, right? So if you look at some of the shorter barrel carbines that still get scopes on them, they are inherently more accurate than, say, a 18-inch barrel with a carbine gas system. You know, it, it it's not always about the barrel length to velocity ratio. That's not always the best discussion. Because out there of people getting confirmed 500 yard kills with a 10.3 inch barrel you know what I'm mm-hmm. because they used both that always and that ammo always is what brings us back to the mark 12 because it's that no such thing outdated dinosaur shut there's up. no such thing Sorry. shut up but what 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 i'm trying to say is we're, we're talking about scope garbage we're talking about well we're not talking about the mark 12 Oh my fucking god! <laughs> you see this dinosaur of a rifle that has been they're, they're going for the exact same thing that they were going for with the we're not going to talk about or he who shall not be named. Yes, yes, it is he they're, who shall not be named. Yeah, we're going, we're going for both. Oh, oh. No. we're going for that rifle. Trying to do it with less, less weight, less barrel. Uh, we're trying to get away from the higher magnification range 
to a one to six, and it's doing the exact same thing that the dinosaur did. You know, does that make any sense? What I'm trying to say? It's doing it better at shorter length and less weight. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's the thing. It's it's a beautiful progression. Like we went with the old, you know, I have a forty five seventy. It needs, you know, or uh, sharps. Sharps is a great example. Incredibly long rifle, breech loaded, pound, because that's what they thought needed. They needed to get to that 600 yard range. And, and now we're shrinking down to 14.5 inch reckies with the one to six, and we're hitting that range. Obviously, there there's a five. huge, right. And obviously, that's a huge technological advance that allowed us to do that. Changing the mindset of we need a long barrel and we need high velocities to be able to make this happen out to 500 yards or so. And that, I think know, that's what the whole scope carving thing's about. Yeah. And the follow on to that is if we can ever get Scott in here, um, <laughs> we'll be to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably playing armor right now. That um, is we'll talk about and we'll just we'll just do it without him if we have to. I'm um, talking about yeah. Mark 262, how it was related to the program that it shall not be named. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, you know, what it what it did across the board. To make it, what we are now seeing as like recce and you know, other shit like that being you know more mainstream, and, and I think that is a great topic for a future video is how Mark two six two world for you know yeah. ballistically it's speaking not a how it, round. it's not a perfect it, no round. no it's but, not it's not but, but it did it change is a lot so much better and I'm sure eventually we'll get to the point where we're shooting six hundred yards getting the same. Expansion as he would at 200 yards, you know, one day, yeah, Six one day we'll get the, the, the thing, yeah. Well, uh, I would Nosler, they'll figure it out. But doesn't 65 Grendel have like issues with bolt lugs and bolt faces and shit going, no, yeah, because it's a 762 by 39 with a different bullet, it's not a, it's not a, straight it's straight a different, yeah, but I mean, that's yeah. the same, same way as the uh. You know, it came in, it came in hot, and then it, it just kind of, yeah. no one wanted to talk about it anymore. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, but, it's the end of know. the day. It's my, my, my main thing is you, you get on all these forums, you get on the Facebook <laughs> groups, and all the derp zones, and talk about what 5.56 five, can do and from whatever <laughs> barrel length. And you have so many people there, like, no five, fucking five, kidding. 5.56 five, five, in 1965. Because it yeah, tumbles. Yeah, oh, it's three hundred yards. It steps. I'm like, it's it start tumbles. You know, people tumbles. keep talking about, well, oh, my, uh, my five five six can't do this and that and the other. I'm like, sixty five. Get out to from nineteen eighty yeah. five, whatever. Yeah. When M eight five came out, we have better bullets. Or get two sixty two. We have Mark three eighteen. We have Hornady tap. We have fucking Barn seventy grade all coppers. We have, we have all, Burger. We have Nosler. We things. have exactly. <sighs> That's the thing. We're not Your shooting burger. hard. No, bro. Yeah, you know what happens? Well, you know what happens to a deer when you feed it a burger, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. So, deer. but that, that, and that, I think you're right, David. It's a mindset of I need a 27 inch barrel for my whatever oh, rifle was shot in 1782. It's a whole new mind shift. No longer do we need a super long barrel and a super heavy bullet because we have. We have technology. Okay. Yeah. I can so, take a 10 point. I can. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. This, this video is starting to run a little bit long. The it, is. Yeah, it is. It um, is. We we'll hold started, off from Emma then. When we first started this video, um, y'all were referring to me specifically. So at this point, before we end this video, I'm going to go ahead and open up any questions to you guys, to me, in reference to scope carvings, etc. Because I think, oh. I think I have more experience than the both of you. In, of course you do. In the wild scope carving. So, David, okay. if, you know, if you have any questions, by all means, go ahead and throw them out. So, perfect segue for me to throw the, the picture you reminded me up of. Let me mm -hmm. let me get it back up here. While he's looking for that, I have one question for you. Mm. Yeah, do your thing. Oh, no, go ahead. No, I no. like this picture. Okay. All right. So, so for those, um, I don't know if we've actually talked about on any of the modcasts, but um, Vince had some experience with what we know as the 
Army's SDMR or the squad designated marksman rifle. Mm -hmm. um, it parallel with the same time that the Mark 12s were out there that shall not be named, and also the Marine Corps squad on advanced marksman rifle. Um, which I've got some pictures of here in a second, but mm -hmm. so we were discussing about this whole thing about the SDMR mm -hmm. um, and, and and the ammo. Do you see uh, what what do you, what rifle do you see honestly taking over the idea of the SDMR, the SAMR, the SPR, like whatever? Um, in your opinion, from what you were seeing, um, from the picture that you have there. Um, the rifle that I have more experience with as opposed to one you have pictures with or pictures of um, is an M16 A2 style stock and a fluted barrel with an ACOG or a mixture of night forces or whatever the fuck was thrown on those guns um, but I honestly would see something more like the M4A1 Block 2 um, taking over that rifle spot um, the Block 2 is more than accurate enough. It's capable of taking um, magnified optics. It's capable, capable of taking LADs. And if you don't know what the LAD is, that's a laser aiming device. Um, it is compatible with a suppressor like the uh, yep. Knight's NT4, which the both the Army and Marine Corps are running trials on or issuing or whatever, however that's working. Uh, and with mm -hmm. Mark, if you pair them, with Mark 262, they're perfectly capable of um, fulfilling either the XAMR or SDMR role or the Recce role or whatever you would like to call it. Um, honestly, if the Army or the Marine Corps were going to continue um, using a program like that, it would be something like the Block 2 is the direction I would go with. The only change potentially I could see making to those guns is maybe a stainless barrel to try and eke out every little bit of accuracy that the gun's capable of. But in the configuration they're in now, they're most likely perfectly capable of what either branch would ask for, as opposed to like the Marine Corps' use of the M27. I think yeah. something like a 14.5 inch with a low power variable. And that's, that's actually one thing I forgot to touch on, is I think, um, given the fact that the NSDM isn't a sniper, um, I think a transition to something like a 1-8 to eight would probably be the way to go, um, given the fact that NSDM, by its very nature, is a part of a squad, a normal infantry squad. So they need to be able to integrate back into a standard infantry squad. So something like the one power is going to be very advantageous because you can still clear buildings with it. You can still do all the normal infantry shit with it. Um, but if you need to go ahead and take that longer shot, the eight power is available to you. Um, and typically yeah. speaking, the one to eight is a little bit smaller of an optic. So it saves weight, things like that. Um, but a block two can... Um, Pick 15 and like a Razor 1 to 8 CQB as us, something like that is probably the route I would go, as well as a, um, a match trigger. And if I were going to pick a match trigger for the modern day SS or SDM, my option would probably be the Geisley SSF, the Super Select Fire. Yeah. And those are starting to be more common, I think, as well. So and I mean, that should, you know, about, that was the only other thing with, the, you know, making sure it has an SSF. Question. Yeah, no, that, that does. I, mean, I know we've talked about it before. I just wanted to tie that in with what we we're talking about here is, no, I mean, you, you know, bringing it back around with the Marine Corps and the army, both basically any, going to the M4 people. as their standard rifle. It makes sense it's to really do something more like the block two. all the pictures you're pulling up, like the last one with the CQB or with the one to six from Leopold in this picture. They're all the same unit I served, yeah. and they're all third ID guys. Um, yeah, exactly. And the, and I think that was one of the main places they got deployed into, mm -hmm. which makes sense, you know. And I had some scans from a while back from a book I picked up at the the freaking surplus store that had some pictures of Jim Gilliland and yeah. and and, was, and others with. He was Alpha Company um, Two Seven, oh. Bravo Company at the time. I was Bravo Com or Alpha Two Seven, 
alpha company and then I transitioned over like I don't have the unit crest on this particular beret but I still have yeah. the unit crest um, I had it readily available I don't know where my wife used it I have it sitting around somewhere yeah um, but like I have my fucking my super fucking uber high speed oh. flat tipped friend forge from oh, yeah oh, from 27 cotton mailers so yeah I, mean, okay. I had a pretty close relationship with jim gilland as well um so do you have any questions yeah. about the recce sdmr samr shit that you'd like the i have two questions the first one being uh about variable optics with an fsp because that was a great uh, a, transition period between, yes, before they started completely free floating with low profile gas block. What about uh, the second one? Uh, no, it's just people were throwing these uh, variable optics mm -hmm. uh, FSP, where that to most people, uh, as far as Facebook forums would go, would require. Uh, what is it, two to three risers? Is that what we're looking on an average to get over that front sight block? With uh, anyway, uh, the other part of that question is how many uh LaRue rails did I just see in the wild? Um, from David's screen, was that a LaRue? Yeah, was that a LaRue? Most, that wasn't a Knights. Most of the rails I've seen in the, in the wild, quote unquote, yeah. Um, I've only seen two manufacturers. I'm sorry, three, but one doesn't count. Um, I've seen Daniel Defense and Knights. I have also okay. seen a UTG, but that was on an armor. He wasn't around, so fuck no. that dude. Okay, um, but if he goes back to those pictures that he had pulled up, that was not a Knights barrel nut. That wasn't the ribbed barrel nut. It looked like a LaRue Altered the pictures you showed. On these? That. That's Daniel's offense. That's those are the SDMRs. That's a TD. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've just yep. never seen that the, rail. The okay. So that just those shows my ignorance. Just like this one. Yeah, no, that, the, that's... the thing is throwing you off is that they, they have an octagonal kind of shape. Okay. Yeah. Versus no, the actual nut. pure round LaRue. Yeah. No, Later on, yeah, they had a, a different style. Yeah. So that's a See, rail. that's um, something I've never seen before, and that's why I brought it up. Yep. Now the real question I had for Vince is actually, did your, yep. was there an actual advantage seen when they started switching? That should not be named. Like, because you had that on one end, mm -hmm. on one end, and then you had the just standard issue, you know, rear sight, front sight, rifle. Was there, was there a validity? To actually adding that, did it did it start making the grass grow better? Um, was it only, was it a legitimate the thing, reason? The only thing that I um, personally has observed from the transition from the rifles that shall be not be named to something like the SDMR is the addition of either a Knights or DD rail, adding a more in my opinion, a more rugged rail like the DDs or the KAC rail, as opposed to the PRI. Um, I think there was an advantage in that front. The other, th the other thing that I really liked about that, um, the whole process was, you have to build a rifle to the lowest common denominator, and if you're going to yeah. issue a rifle like that to a standard line infantry platoon it needs to be bomb proof and in my opinion there's no more bomb proof system um, at the time at least than something like a front sight post it's really fucking hard to break those things at yes. the end of the day it's well, really fucking hard to break them so at that point in time before you know low profile gas blocks had really hit their point of acceptance I think that that's probably the biggest advantage is maybe durability. Okay. And um, however, the biggest disadvantage on the same token was a lot of the commanders that were in charge of these programs or 
<clears throat> that we're assigning roles to SDNs and all that shit is they were putting ACOGs on what could be considered precision gun. And they were running um, M855 through those guns as opposed to running okay. a more suitable optic in Mark 262. So it was kind of a double okay. edged sword depending on who your commander was at the time. And, and see, I think I think my main uh, the fruit of the tree I was trying to get to that question was: Were you seeing uh, engagements or more accurate engagements? I'm sorry, say that again. Okay, were you seeing like before the variable optics that you guys were seeing out there mm -hmm. afterwards? Were you seeing just more? What was it more successful or was it more accurate? Were there... I think with something like the program that shall not be named and the SDMR, I think the Mark 12 was seeing a more accurate and successful engagement because of the kind of okay. objects that were issued on those guns as to the goofy transition period between the SDMRs, which were viewed as M16s that at the at when we yeah. had them. Their view is fucking M16s with a fancy stock and a better trigger. Um, okay. But as it evolved and people started actually realizing what those guns were truly capable of, it started to see that shift to, oh, fuck, these are actual precision guns. They're not just your standard M16. Okay. So it was kind I'd of, see. it was that goofy in between period when I was in that there were precision guns, but not really precision guns. Okay, that, that's what I was kind of getting at. We 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 taking out more, or we taking out more efficiently? Yeah, it was the the Mark Twelve was definitely at the time. Um, it was a more effective system, but when we got back from deployment, is when we started to see that shift into other things. Okay, and. Um, after we got back and we started to learn, hey, these are what the guns are actually capable of, this is when we started to see we went from an increase to a decrease, and then when we got back and the guns got retrofitted, we started to see that increase again. So we started to outfit the rifles differently. But once we started actually using the rifles for what the fuck they were designed for, is when you hit that point of increase in efficiency and effectiveness again, because the army is a weird is a weird beast and that it's like, oh, here, here's this new shit. But we really have no idea how the fuck to use it. Yeah. And nice. then I think that's a great way of saying it. And then it gets to the units and the dudes are like, oh, this is a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. And then it hits that point of, wait, it can be used in a different and more efficient manner. And once it hits that point and once it hits that fucking evolutionary step is when other guys are like, wait, wait, wait. If we change this one little thing about it, we're gonna get back to that increase again, and then everyone's like, "Oh my god, this thing's fucking amazing!" Yeah, I mean, that's I a, think that's that's, it, a, that's a totally different topic. That's a training topic. That's a training issue. Um, but to answer your question, it was a rise and fall of seeing what the guns are capable of, what you can do with a shorter barrel, what you can do with mm -hmm. a different amount of magnification, which is like I don't. David, did you show the picture of the M4s with the um, one to sixes? Uh, no, I don't think I had pulled that one up. Go ahead and pop that up real quick. Which one? Wait, wait, the ones with the one to sixes? Are we talking about the razors? Well, no, yes. No, 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 while... no, 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 no. The standard no? M4s on the light fighter that had the one to sixes. Oh. Okay. Well, on that same picture. Oh, sorry. Uh, nope. Same thread. Let me get back to that page. I was. I've been scrolling. While he's, looking at it. while he's pulling that up, I will bring up the topic I always like to bring up. Other than I like clones. Uh, if you guys that are watching this, and have actually watched it to the end, which are, I think at this yeah, point, what's the count for people that watched the whole video? We're hitting almost an hour. We can't count. Of yeah. Sorry. Right okay. Now. We need suggestions for uh video topics yeah no, because please there's... if you if you are actually watching these videos to the point that we're at now to this hour mark um and i know i know there's a few of you 
um, please throw yeah. your suggestions, throw out the things you'd like to Any, hear us talk about, so we can go ahead and cover them. Because at the end of the yeah. day, we start we started this channel to go ahead and um, kind of fill a point in YouTube. Because at, really, there's nobody that's actually talking about these clone rifles and things to that effect. So if you have comments on how to improve or have suggestions on what on the things you'd actually like to hear please by all means go ahead and comment and let yeah. us know so we can tailor our our content more to what you'd like to hear and absolutely because we will spend our time we research and i mean we spend an hour before the video even starts trying to figure out and nail down we want your suggestions do you want to suggest in if you want to suggest a random video about why there was ever uh, something, just <laughs> let us know. And we, I mean, we'll research it and figure it out and get the knowledge to you. We want suggestions because we want to learn so that you just can learn. Much, that, that's we wanna, that's we what we're here to dispel stupid things. We're, we want to learn just as much as everybody else does. By no Absolutely. Means, by no means are any of the three of us now that are sitting here are we fucking experts but if you have something that you uh, want to hear about david's or, a nerd yeah I'm just you a nerd. want to learn you you're only a nerd on a mark 12 you don't count if you <laughs> want to learn something about the clone world and it means us ask it. if we have to go ahead and take fucking six hours to go ahead and research it please ask anyways david that's um, why i do this too david has a picture pulled up from one of my sister units of M4s, just your standard rack rate M4s before the whole full auto garbage got added, uh, with Leopold um, one to sixes mm -hmm. and camouflage paint by the Book of Pat. And there's I don't know what the Book of Pat is wrong as fuck, but they have um, Liberu optic or Liberu mounts on them as well. Yeah, but and I want you to see there's where my whole FSP with the Liberu and one to six comes go. from. So for all of you fuckers who think that low power variable optics on a standard M4 or whatever can't happen, there you go. It's right there. If you want to see something rare in the wild, which actually that should be the title of this they video. 300, uh, the, the, the post actually said they had gotten like something like Sorry. 320 to 350 yeah. loophole one to sixes to distribute through the unit. Mm -hmm. I mean. That's 300 um, and something weapon systems right there, which is already more than double the amount of SPRs that were originally made. Yep. Okay. If you if you want to see something where you can defend your right to halal. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> there Hunter, it is. Can't. Hunter isn't here. He can't bitch. But anyway, <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. And as per the normal, I'm going to hand this over to Cy to close out because, you know, clone shit. So, Cy, go ahead and close everything out. <laughs> My name's Cy, and I like it when you like, share, and comment all of our videos. <laughs> God damn it.